from the board is as an educate, educational, I guess, director, um, where I work with and collaborate with other um, educational departments to put together educational um, events or educational um, experiences for the Power and Progeny um, organization. And hopefully we're able to encourage and inspire, but also learn and grow um, professionally. I feel like this is an awesome opportunity for joint efforts to come together and work um, towards growing and having like visions and to inspire and promote um, diversity, equity, and inclusion in our communities, in our schools, churches, wherever we can to try to help people come together and to really combat a lot of the hatred and bigotry that's out there and to dispel a lot of the um, stereotypes and things that people just don't know about and bring people together and have conversations that are really meaningful. This is my 32nd year as a school educator, elementary school ed educator. I've taught in three states. Um, South Carolina is home, so I started in South Carolina after graduating from South Carolina State University. Um, and I was recruited to integrate and teach in Atlanta, Georgia, and integrate a school in Fulton County, which is in Alpharetta. That was an experience that really brought me to being passionate about diversity, inclusion, and equity. And because um, I lived that experience um, in a different way that I never knew about was going to happen. But um, edu as an educator and as a teacher, and then of course, as a mom of three, um, I really see the passion and the need for our youth and for our adults to bridge that gap and have conversations that are meaningful. Um, I also have my master's degree from Cambridge where I worked on a thesis and um, created a pilot program for diversity. Um, and I implemented that in Georgia, in Alpharetta and in the Rock Hill schools with the modifications at Rosewood. And I am the vice chairperson or vice president of the Rock Hill City Community Relations Council. So that's been a piece of um, experience that I have really grown to and love in the Rock Hill area and been able to um, be on that committee for, gosh, 16 years maybe since I moved back from Atlanta and moved back home. So I feel like I pull a lot of pieces um, and trainings that I had from Georgia and the Anti-Defamation League. I've been trained as a facilitator with them. Um, I've also been trained through Emory University through their Teachers Cultures program that they had at the time. Um, and I've been mentored by some of the um, directors of the ADL community. Um, so they've been mentors to me. So I've learned and grown a lot in a lot of different areas and spaces. I feel like I bring a lot of different experiences to the table from not just South Carolina, but also from Georgia and teaching in different schools where I'm able to have different populations of students and um, administrators that kind of helped shape me, I guess, or um, help me grow as a professional as well. So looking at that and working with the city of Rock Hill and noticing how even the corporate entities and how the outside world outside of education how they function um, and how our communities are different from state to state or from city to city and how we have to, um, I guess, handle certain situations that come up in our communities differently because of the populations that we're dealing with. So I feel like I'm bringing different experiences and expertise, I hope, to the table where we can really grow and make it work for power progeny. Both of my parents were educators. I'm an only child, but also attending public school um, and being the only minority in certain situations was very tough 
I, and as a child, you don't always understand why you don't see people that look like you in the classroom. And why is it that certain people are treating you differently or you feel this ism in the room or in the institution? And you're wondering why is it different for me and the challenges that you have to deal with and you come home as a child growing up in Rock Hill and trying to just push through that and having parents that would always try to empower me and encourage me to accept who you are. You have a voice and you have a right to speak up and having that instilled in me early as a child and then going out into the community and growing up in the community that I am a part of now, even as an adult, you see the damage that could be done to a lot of our youth at an early age when they don't have, they don't have those parents at home that are encouraging them to speak up. They don't have that teacher that looks like them or maybe not look like them, but even just concerned enough to care about being inclusive and to embrace the diversity in the classroom or in the school, or maybe there is, we need to start a new program that will encompass an opportunity for all kids to share, grow, learn about the global world because everybody is not gonna stay in South Carolina. And when you learn to grow up and perform and you have to work in other entities, you realize how there's a big world out there and leaving Rock Hill and going to Atlanta, Georgia to teach and integrating a school. Honestly, that was probably the really the first time as a young adult having to face it face to face, the hatred, the names, the um, pushback of me even being there as an African-American teacher at 23 years old starting my teaching career there and realizing people didn't want me there because I was black um, and having the, the bad, being escorted to my car when I had to leave work because I was black and how dangerous that was. I had never really experienced that kind of pushback. And so it helped me to look at things differently, but it also pushed me to check myself and say, hey, what are the things I feel like I can grow and learn from this experience as, as opposed to running from it? And I feel like Power Progeny is going to give, open those opportunities, those doors, those opportunities to, I guess, grow and learn and experience and talk about how can we help each other? I love how the authentic opportunities to share and um, have real serious in-depth conversations, how we are able to reach across age groups and generations to have conversations that are um, hopefully enlightening, but also a teaching moment for some. Sometimes it's, it's an opportunity to share your testimony with someone who may have never looked at it from that perspective. So I think it's an opportunity for all of us to grow and to be a part of making a difference in our community. I, I really would love to see Power Progeny um, in every school um, in South Carolina, of course, as a start, in every church organization, because I mean, even Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, some form of Power Progeny happening with our youth at an early age as we grow, because we're living in a different world that may have, I don't know, it probably has always been there, but perhaps now I feel and I see so many of the isms and the hatred and it's being taught and breeded through our children. And I don't think they understand the pain that it's creating in our society and we look around and we see the violence and you wonder why, but we're all people, we're part of that human race. We all need the same things. So we have more in common than we have 
um, and when we look at differences, but at the same time, let's embrace that. And I feel like we can learn to live in a better society, a better world with not so many, so much pain and hurt. And that's, that's my goal. That's what I would love to see. And I think Power Progeny is headed in the right direction. It's a great opportunity to teach global diversity. It's a great opportunity for children to learn to um, have dialogue and communicate across diverse cultures, age groups, backgrounds, and to learn from, they can learn from each other. That peer mediation, that peer dialogue and conversation with adult advisor, advisors who are guiding but the kids are going to be leading basically their own way because you see the needs that they need and they would basically help you see where um, the advisors need to bring in resources. Because I think every, it's not cookie cutter for everybody and for every school because the dynamics are different from school to school and staff members. So I feel like this is a great opportunity for many um, of our organizations to really become a part and join forces. You know, instead of everybody doing things in isolation, come together, unite in peace and for the growth and the development of everyone. Because I don't care if you're 80 years old, your experiences are different from a 50 year old person today. And we can learn from each other, but we can also appreciate and respect um, our experiences and our differences.